and welcome back to Toby's Reduce Skills with Toby. That's me. Today's video will talk about Victron Venus OS and the Raspberry Pi in combination and putting some relay switches in. As you know, the Servo GX from Victron, it does come already out of the box with some relays and you can just connect whatever you want to to it. Probably not whatever one you want to, but there is at least a big amount of device you can connect to it. And I would like to use this little board connected to the Raspberry Pi and also then configure the Venus OS accordingly. And there was a user, he posted it on Facebook, I believe, and asked about this, posted a link with it as well. And we'll just try to reproduce it. And what you can do is automation and triggering things out of this. So that's kind of cool and I wanna explore this as well with you together and we'll start with this now. There are two steps we have to do and consider. The first one will be installing the hardware itself, which is this little relay board, which um, link in the description below. This is one option. There is actually also another option, which is at the moment on the way to my house, but uh, I'll have to do a separate video for this one, I guess. Um, the advantage, um, disadvantage, not sure, whatever you want to call it, it has four relays, but I cannot plug in anything here anymore because it's using all the pins on the on the bottom already. So it means as soon as I attach this to the Raspberry Pi, and you will see it when we do the, con the actual connection, I lose all those pins because I guess they will all use those relays somehow. The relays use those pins, actually. The other option I ordered, it's not this one, surprise. It has only, only three relays, but comes also with all the pins. So it le let's, let's get them through um, the connection and then also has all pins available here as well. For now, we'll just do the installation with this little board. That's the first step. The second step, we have to configure it in Venus OS. How to do that, I will show you at least what I will do and what, when you look at this page here right now, Relay Overview Venus OS, it's a really good explanation and it's, there are also instructions in there what you have to do and it's fairly simple. You have to have a remote connection though via SSH. So that's very important so you need to enable SSH as well. Those are the two steps we need to do and then after that, well there might be a third step because you want to connect something to your relay, you want to control something over through this and it should sh look like this relay overview but only with four relays for this board we're using here. For the other board, it will be only three, for example. That's what it should be, and we'll do it step by step. So the first step will now be doing the installation on the Raspberry Pi itself. So I will disconnect from my current system. I'll try to show you how I connect it, which should be not too difficult. We'll boot it, and then we'll see if it does work or not, and uh, then we'll follow with step two. This is my Raspberry Pi. That's the board we're looking at. Those are the screws and distance screws we received. Uh, first of all, I obviously have to take out the Raspberry Pi here again, which is a bummer. So, one downside already, I have to take out the housing, I have to take out the fan. And I have to then afterwards see what I can do because this goes just the other way around. This goes just above here. Those passive cooling uh, fins. So I hope that will work. And now we'll do it this way. Now we want to connect both together. It should go easily just plug and play on top. Just making sure that all pins are connecting properly and nothing's bent. Then you can just put it together. Before I click everything in place, we'll have to use our distance screws. So the best strategy will be putting those in, screwing them on first. Last one, and now we take our board and align it. Make sure it fits everywhere in. Connect it. Perfect. Turn around and screw in all the nuts. Okay. 
Oh. Like this, almost. And there we are. Okay, cool. So the Raspberry Pi is up and running here. And let's see if it, it did already connect. <gasps> it is. So we will go ahead and configure everything. That means our good old friend Putty slash Putty will use to connect to the Raspberry Pi. I do have my IP address. Um, as a reminder, if you don't know what's IP address, go into settings go into, I have a Wi-Fi connect, connection, uh, whoop, there we are, go into the Wi-Fi or either whatever you have and figure out what's your IP address. In my case, I do have it. It's this one down here. Very important, requirement, enable SSH. Again, here's the link to it, how you do that. Still the same, even with this version. And by the way, I'm running the version 2.94 at the moment. Still, that's the newest as of this video is done. I'm connected to the Raspberry Pi. And now, let me pull this out really quick. This is the link with the instruction where I read how to do this and what to do. And what we will need out of here, link in the description below as well, we will need here from It's Me this entire as code formatted uh, input and uh, you can see it does come with more inputs than it, it comes with six inputs um, that's something we might have to figure out but um, as much as I remember and know we can either use the existing one and copy it in or what I want to do I'll take the existing file which is in etc venus and then gpoio underscore list I will just rename it and then I'll copy and paste this entire script in there completely as it is will it work we'll figure that out I guess so that means I will use the first command it should be this one it worked I guess now we will create a new one I hope Oh yeah, nano is there. Nice. So what I'm doing here, so first renaming the old, the old existing file with a dot old. Now with nano we open a file which has the same name, which we just renamed, and we'll just paste this entire code in there. I will just use even the, the comments he put in there. We'll use as well. And what I'm doing is just so I use my keyboard. Control C, and I will use the right mouse to click in it just one time, and we'll paste everything in there. And now, what we need to do to exit is Control X, and then it will ask us, "Hey, do we need to? Or do we want to save it?" We click Yes, so we type in the Y, and now we hit Enter. What do we do next? So I would do a reboot, but let's just change over here. There should be nothing visible really. Yeah. Let's just do a reboot and see what happens. And therefore, going to settings, general, double click on reboot. And let's wait a second. All right, let's give it a try. There we are back. Nice. Let's go into settings. Let's see. In the relay tab here. And relay one function temperature function function. All right. Let's just see relay two. <gasps> Did you see that? I just want to make sure. I have this position correct, sorry. Let's turn on the three, four. Let's see what do we have here? Alarm relay. Huh! Oh, 
four relays on. Nice. All right. I actually don't want to have this as an alarm. I'm calling it a gener generator start stop. I think that's better. I like that more. Oh, and then we can change names. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. Let's do one more thing, and that's still within the putty. Connecting. There we go. And I want to go into this one. I want to go all the way down to relay number six because we don't want to do that. Auto comment out, auto comment here. Four, three. All right. Go to likes, save it, yes, enter. And my assumption is we still have to reboot. Let's give it a minute. All right, let's see. There we are. Oh, there we are. Now we only have four relays in here because that's the amount of relays we have. Um, cool. So, question to the audience. What can we do with those relays? I mean, I have ideas. I just have not figured out any use case for me so far. But I do like what I can see. And also, what I want to try is for sure having the other board, uh, which I just ordered and uh, just making another video. Maybe it's just a plug and play. Maybe we're pretty lucky. Um, but the advantage is that we do have those pins. I don't know how you call the pin through or whatever. So that will be very interesting to see and just plug and play exchanging boards and see if it works. That would be great. Let me know in the comment section what are your reasons you're using it. What are the main reasons? Are you using any automations? Is there anything you want to specifically see? And when I have that, then I'll make a follow-up video to this one. And uh, I look forward to see your comments. If there's any other questions, anything, any suggestion you have, any recommendations, um, maybe you have better ideas, maybe you have awesome use cases, please feel free to share. And I would like to see if I can also make it work and also share my work with you. Until then, thanks for watching. See you next time. Tschüss.